Unless you know all your paleontologists uh, and are smacking your lips to get down there, you got to take a shovel with you and go through, or bulldozer, and get to go through all that now to get down to the working layer, which is where the paleontologists have been talking about all night were able to work originally, etc. Unless, unless you take Mother Nature along as a helper. Her creek is still working, and it's eroding. It's moving around. Of course, Big Bone Lake today is a state park. You're not allowed to collect anything there, now, unless you get a permit. And uh, a permit was recently got by the Cincinnati Museum Center because Big Bone Creek had worked its way in to more bones and uh, was exposing them. And the state park uh, of Kentucky, the state park system in Kentucky, realized that these bones were just going to wash downstream unless somebody you know, collected them, uh, etc. Not that they want to encourage collecting there, but, but in this case, it was almost a scab, you know, uh, grab them before they're gone. So, there's a picture of Sarah sitting right back there, down uh, part of the whole expedition. This is just about two and a half months ago, folks. You can see here's Big Bone Creek. You can see how it's been eroding. Look at the trees falling in. So, you know, like creeks do, right? they, they move around. Uh, and as it moves, in this case, to the north, um, we're standing here in the north bank of the stream, it's eroding out bones. Now, I know you can't see them, and, that, and that's because most of them are still underwater. And remember the bone layer, if you remember the previous picture that were, that's being eroded out here, it, it, it's the zone B, it's the bison bones. So what you see there underneath the water is the bones of bison. Now it's difficult, all you paleontologists in the crowd realize it's difficult to work underwater. You, know, you need to get the mud stirred up, you know, it's kind of, it's messy, etc. So what Glenn Storrs, another member of your organization did, is uh, got himself uh, some sandbags and, and, and the museum pump and uh, took and, and pumped water out from a portion of the creek where the bones seemed to be particularly numerous, exposing the bottom of the creek so you could go to work here without working underwater. You could see more easily uh, what you can find. There you can see with that coffer dam built up, uh, water kept out of that portion of its creek bed and uh, Glenn digging in, seeing what, what he can find there. To see, you know, a closer look at the whole, the whole story at once, um, instead of looking at bone by bone, we go back out there to where Sarah's standing and uh, take her viewpoint as she's looking north into the bank of the stream, okay, looking over the sandbags at the bank of the stream. Uh, here is every bone that was found. Uh, the dashed line here at sandbags, the, the solid line on the top is the bank of the stream, and there are between 500 and 600 bison bones um, all over the place. They represent at least five individual animals, um, because there are the, the, the specific type of bones that have been found uh, are at least five in number of, of uh, you know left heel bones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and and it's probably a butchering site. The Indians certainly may have killed these animals as well, but they certainly butchered their, them as well because all those little dark areas you see there are tools or or flakes from from stone tools or they're bone tools. Here is a tool made out of a vertebrae bone uh, right here. A scraper, knives, here to look at more closely. Doesn't look like much looking at it this way, but if you turn it on edge, very sharp to take the meat off those bison. This, of course, has not been radiocarbon dated yet. Guess is, you know, somewhere between 200 and 600 years old, uh, which would make these uh, Fort Ancient uh, Indians. The bones themselves are back at the uh, Geyer Center taken out from, from, from this uh, most recent uh, collection. Uh, they're being looked at now for cut marks to see how the Indians did butcher them, etc. Um, and, and eventually some of them will be radiocarbon dated, so, so we'll get a better idea of, of what is this latest thing. Admittedly, this is not as exciting as mammoths and mastodons and so on. But on the other hand, folks, we know not too much about, even though these are more recent animals. Uh, there were American bison here in great numbers till about 200 years ago when they were wiped out of the eastern United States. Uh, uh, we don't know much about the interaction between them and Indians because we don't find much of these bones in Indian middens. Very strange, even though there are thousands of buffalo here, uh, maybe they were just too big to, to carry back to, to the village sites. So th this is a major find, one of the biggest finds of, of a bison, certainly bison butchering spot in eastern United States. Bottom line, uh, Big Bone Lake ain't stopped yet. It's a great scientific resource. It will continue to be a scientific resource. And you've got to remember, down there in Zone C, there are still thousands, 
if not tens of thousands, of more Ice Age mammal bones to be mm. found. Okay? I mean, this has just begun. And uh, for centuries to come, uh, this place will still be known as uh, the birthplace of American paleontology. Some people are now starting to call this the birthplace of, of world vertebrate paleontology. It's the place where extinction finally was proven. Uh, and that's really big in your fear field, if you think about it. And, and that whole idea came out of a big bone lab. Hmm. Thank you.